Dell has finally given us what we've all been waiting for, the refreshed G3 gaming laptop. So let's take a look and find out what improvements have been made to this budget gaming machine. Ever since the Dell G5 and G7 gaming laptops were refreshed at CES 5 months ago, I've been waiting to find out more about the entry level G3. And a lot of you have too. It didn't make sense for the G3 to be refreshed for CES, as Nvidia were only launching RTX graphics for laptops. And in my opinion, it doesn't make much sense for an entry level gaming laptop to have an RTX 2060, which is close in performance to a GTX 1070. Now that Nvidia have released the GTX 1660 Ti and 1650 graphics, we're going to start seeing a lot more budget friendly laptops that aren't subject to the RTX tax. Enter the Dell G3, which starts at $799 US dollars, though the entry level model comes with GTX 1050 3GB graphics, with 899 getting you the GTX 1650, and it's great to see dual channel memory being used here. Combined with Intel's newest 9th gen H series CPUs, and we should be getting a fairly good gaming machine. But of course, stay tuned for my detailed testing and full review. The G3 will be available with the i5-9300H, or for some more money you can go from 4 to 6 cores with the i7-9750H instead. Powering that hardware is a 3 cell 51 watt hour battery, so about what I'd expect for an entry level gaming laptop. Something interesting that Dell are introducing with the new G3 is what they're calling Game Shift. Basically, the idea is that you press a button on the keyboard to easily boost performance. This is done by pressing the F7 key with the G, and the software will show you whether it's on or off. Without installing different tools onto the machine, I wasn't able to see what this was actually changing. However, Dell note that it maxes out the fan speed, so this may give us slightly more fan control than we had before. However, we're still not given granular fan control like we're all wanting. It's not just all about the specs though. The G3 design has also been updated. It's available in black or white plastic, and it's got slimmer bezels and a smaller overall footprint compared to its predecessor. Similar to the changes we saw in the new G5 and G7. It's also got the option of a 144Hz screen, 4-zone RGB keyboard, and you can use the Alienware command center to control it. The whole thing is plastic, and the lid has these lines running from top to bottom. And on the back there's the G3 logo with air exhaust vents. Underneath there are some intakes with another G3 logo. For I.O., on the left there's a standard SD card slot, two USB 2.0 ports, and wedge lock slot. While on the right there's the power input, Type-C port with display port on the 1650 and above versions, HDMI 2.0 output, USB 3.1 Type-A port, Ethernet, and 3.5mm audio combo jack. I asked about whether Dell had any plans to introduce some AMD options into their G-Series lineup. I wasn't able to get solid confirmation, but they told me that may be coming around Q1 2020. So for now, the Intel and Nvidia configurations are what we've got. Overall, I think I'm a fan of the new design, as it looks less chunky when compared to the previous G3. But only time will tell how much performance has improved with Intel's latest 9th gen H series CPUs and Nvidia's GTX 16 series graphics in this chassis. Of course, with a slimmer design, thermals are always going to be a concern. I'm keen to test it out in the future and see how it holds up, and to see just how much the game shift mode changes things. While I wasn't able to open the laptop up on the show floor, Dell have provided a couple of images that seem to indicate a couple of shared heat pipes between CPU and GPU. The plastic build looked pretty good in my opinion, especially for something that's on the cheaper, more budget friendly side, while also not looking completely over the top gamery. That's not all Dell had to announce at Computex this year. In an upcoming video, we'll be taking a look at what's coming to the higher end Alienware side. Let me know what you guys thought about Dell's new G3 gaming laptop down in the comments. And would you be interested in seeing me compare it with the G5 and possibly G7? Let me know. And if you haven't already, get subscribed so you don't miss the rest of my Computex 2019 coverage.